turning a huge, massive twist. And that bitch made Turtle Man fucking Mitch McConnell. Mitch. <sighs> He's not turtly enough to be in the Anytime I hear the word Mitch. And it, <laughs> and it makes it very Anytime upset. I hear the word Mitch, I just think Mitch the bitch. Yeah, that's kind of it. I'm surprised that hasn't been yeah. used more often. Sorry. Anybody's name is Mitch. Sorry. Yeah, if your name is Mitch, fuck you. Like your parent, your parents clearly don't love you. Like, yeah, they named you Mitch. Yeah. Like, if you go by Mitchell, that's fine. Yeah. If you if your name is Mitch, if you're Eric with a K, fuck you. Go away. Go away. Especially Man, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what? You hate what? a lot of people. I hate a lot of people. I never said hate. I just said fuck you. <laughs> That that's not hate. That's just like I, I don't want nothing to do with you. All right. Well, that's to me, worse. that's that's hate. Okay. That's worse than hate. That's just not caring. And you spell your name Sean S E A N. Your name is Seen, and I'm not gonna refer to you as anything else. Yeah, big. <laughs> C- there's that. There's that uh, hip hop artist, Big Scene. Mm-hmm. Because he's he's Hella he's, ridiculous. Hot, he's hot on the scene. Just saying, right, well, the spelling it makes more sense. It has an H. Three, Sean. two, <laughs> yeah, and a one. W. back to all sorts of sports episode nice who knows 19 yeah 19 cool of the video episodes um, as far as the audio episodes ryan what number are we on no. man uh zero right, zero <laughs> negative i need one. to threaten to bomb spotify again like what's happening no this this is the upload platform we were using has since gone bankrupt and i've just had no time or energy to find a new one it looks like that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend so I can stop fielding these goddamn questions. I'll just start doing some research <laughs> myself as well, yeah. see what's what. Uh, I'm going to listen to the Joe Budden podcast and see where it is they're going and just uh, kind of harp Wait, on that thing. What did, what did Joe... That one was great. What happened with... Uh, Joe was going to go to somewhere and then he never... He's going to up... all DSPs. All DSPs? He's going to be on He's all gonna be DSPs. Everywhere. Oh, he's all a free of except them. Spotify. Oh, he's not yeah, everywhere be on except Spotify. Spotify. Oh, everywhere but Spotify. Was that was that a, um, was that a to, money or creativity issue? Um, both. Like money and respect. That's what look. That's what it sounds like. So they are, were they going to take control over his the creativity rights or? Well, no. Yeah, it kind of sounded like they offered. They offered. Um, they offered like the most money that that they ever offered him. But they wanted everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they okay. wanted a piece of everything, which right. is bullshit. Yeah. So, yeah. And then now, like, Spotify is, like, in a whole bunch of shit now anyway, so. Well, they whatever. got they got Rogan, so. Yeah, and that's a problem for a lot of people. So, well, it is well, what it is. If you watch what uh, Ninja did, the uh, gamer, the uh, yeah. Fortnite guy, yeah. he went to... Uh, YouTube to for Twitch. ten million dollars or thirty million dollars, and then Twitch rebought him back out for another ten, mm-hmm. and then so now he's back on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Get that, get that money. It just depends on what you want to do. If you're trying to sign the exclusive deal to somebody to have those rights, if you have a big enough brand, okay, which is what Rogan is doing, get that money. But if you have a dedicated audience that's going to follow you anywhere, and you can more streamline exactly where your advertising is going to be. Or even do something more direct in the sense of where it is you're going to get payment maybe directly from your people, whether that be a Patreon, whether it be a uh, OnlyFans, other, OnlyFans, any sort of subscription service, yeah. you can go that route. Or you even go the Louis C.K. route, which is you offer your product on your own website for a certain amount of money. Oh, yeah. It's it's just a matter of right now what people don't realize that you have the power and control to kind of do it yourself. Mm-hmm. People kind of want to go the easier route, which is if somebody came to us today, if 
Spotify came to us today and said, hey, we're going to give you guys $300,000, $100,000 for each of you to exclusively be here on Spotify. You guys might be in a financial situation to say no. I'm not going to be in a financial situation to say yeah. no. Well, the question, is, the question I would have is, all right, how long is the contract? Like, oh, what, of course. What are we giving up? What like, are we giving I, up? I'm Do not giving up the IP. Also, right. you, got, you got a lawyer on the team, so that helps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so today's episode was the last one on Spotify, and I think they're going to take like a week, a week and a half off or something. Button? So, yeah. Yep, yep. I mean, he's taking, off the, he's taking off the Jewish New Year. That's fine. Yeah. So, well um, going back to sports, right? <laughs> I had the results from week one. Ooh, oh, it, God. It is as close as I've ever thought it would be. Uh oh. Can you see it? Nope. You can see it. Oh, I lost. <laughs> Shit. You lost by one, and Kadeen, you and I tied. <laughs> that works. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm I'm not really happy with a tie, but okay. Yeah, I mean, I think going forward, like if um, the tiebreaker should be the Thursday night game, we should just bet on that because we come back after that game anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that could be the tiebreaker. Feel that. Um, um, so, looking back at week one, Mike, Kadeen, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk to one of our former co-hosts because you guys played them. And oh, yeah. Something happened. I and I, there was a lot of back and forth during the game. I spoke so. with him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as we know, the llama, formerly known as Mauricio, used to be on the podcast itself, and he's a huge Eagles fan. And me being a diehard Washington football team fan, the I mean, one that struggles with his fandom on a day-in and day-out basis. But, uh, well, we played them this weekend, and I think everybody kind of going into it knew that, like, we were 100% the underdogs. I think the only thing that gave us any sort of realm or hope was the fact of how many injuries the Eagles had, especially in our offensive line. And um, off the, out the gate, you looked, and before you blinked, we were down 17 nothing. So it kind of looked like, all right, here we go again. Dwayne Haskins was not throwing the ball well. He was not being accurate at all. The I knew game, it, that the running, the running game, game was, was not existent. <laughs> the defense showed flashes, but then it was like every third down and long, here's a personal foul, 15 yards first down. Or there was one point where it was third and 22 and like their own 10, and they threw a 55-yard pass. So it was like – all right, this is just what we're going to be. This is just what the, what, the, what the Washington football team is. It just felt like last year again. You go on Twitter, everybody's doing the same thing. I know in the text thread, Mauricio was talking all this smack. And at that point, I was kind of defeated. It's like, F this team, F my life. I don't really give a shit about anything. But as I know you guys are ones that love movies, there is a story that came out about what happened in the locker room at halftime, which is now something that is in the Washington football team lore which is Ron Rivera, who's suffering from cancer, as we all know. He goes to chemotherapy. Um, standing up on the sidelines for that amount of time, at halftime, he needs to get an IV. So while he was getting an IV, he couldn't really talk to the team. So their quarterback, this young leader named Dwayne Haskins, That's my walked quarterback. in there and basically told everybody in that locker room that we are not playing at the level of, well, we, we, at which we can play. We need to do better. We need to do better for that coach that's in the other room that's sacrificing for us. They went out there in the second half, and boy, oh, boy, do we dominate. 27-point 27, 27 run. They couldn't score another point. Beyond that, we had eight sacks on defense. Eight sacks, two forced fumbles, two interceptions. The defense started smoking everything. Chase Young, two forced fumbles and a sack and a half. In his first game, love it. Ryan Kerrigan coming off the bench, just in every which every time that he was on the field for those short amounts of time he was on the field, just wrecking shit. Yeah, he was. He, they were putting him on the line, and then he was playing stand up linebacker, and then Deron Payne. Dude, if, if you follow what it is that San Francisco did last year, which is making sure your front seven, especially your front four, is stacked, and then doing what you can do on offense to just kind of get it going. This is what it looks like Washington's philosophy is going to be. Jack Del Rio, well, personally, I, mean, I want to punch you in the face, bro, but that defense is looking pretty solid. I, like, I don't think last year San Francisco could put up 27 points if you gave them a $100 million contract bonus. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to sleep on that. So hold on. George, George no. Kittle, Jimmy Garoppolo. They have I'm a good running game. 
they, they have a good, that's down. that's my point. Like if they went down, if they went down seventeen points, you would think that they were done. They can no. run the ball. They can run the ball well. They can run the ball and they can score on defense because their defense is great. Right, but I'm saying if their defense gave up seventeen points in the first quarter and a half, you would think that they would not be able to come back. That's all I'm saying. I don't, I'm not going to argue that too yeah. hard. It's the same thing with Washington. I mean, if you look at our offense right now, it's so unproven. Like, yeah. we got rid of Adrian Peterson, who then put up monster numbers in Detroit for some goddamn reason. Yeah. Um, you have Darius Geis, who I guess is out of jail and posting pictures with a girlfriend, but I'll come back to that. There's um, – outside, of, you had a bunch of unproven running backs. Antonio Gibson looked good in flashes, but as far as that offense, it's basically scary Terry and no one else. Logan Thomas looked good in flashes, but he's the slowest tight end I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, it's just – it was good to see. And if you look at the juxtaposition between Dwayne and the first half compared to the second half, in the first half he was like 2 of 11, like barely – and then he ended the game on like 12 of 18 and just got the ball down the field the way that we need to. And then what we did was – what we did this time, which what we usually do under the, not under the Jay Gruden era, is that once you get a lead, you keep on it. And you keep pushing the ball down the field. And that was something that I'm like looking at and like, okay, we got a hell of a test this week coming up. But as far as seeing uh, Arizona, but as far and Arizona beat that San Francisco team that we're just talking about. Yeah. So if we're looking at that, I'm like, I, I like what I'm seeing as far as that defense. No, you're not hearing me saying the, the Washington football team's going to the Super Bowl. All the way to the Super Bowl. No, you're not hearing me saying we're going to go to the playoffs. But if that defense can show half of what it is they did in this last game every week, we're going to be a problem. And if you overlook that defense when it comes to protecting your quarterback, prepare for your quarterback to be out a few weeks because we're com- that defense is coming for your ass. And like I said in that first half, even though we were down 27 nothing, you got to remember there were a lot of those circumstances where it was 27 or 17. I'm oh, sorry, 17 to nothing. Well, there were a lot of those circumstances where we were looking at third and long, which is the defense put themselves in the right position, but then there'd be a rough in the passer play. And then there'd be a certain hit, that uh, helmet to helmet hit. Or there is like the goof on the 55 yard play where we had them at third and 22. So it's not like the defense was completely sucking the entire or the first half. They just put, they were shooting themselves in the foot, which to me, to, is to be expected when you didn't have any preseason and you got a bunch of guys that are just going in there, they're not going to be as disciplined as they usually are. Yeah, and then you guys were running with – was it Peyton Barber? The vet as, a, as the main running back? Yeah, Barber, okay. McKissick, uh, Antonio Gibson's in there. We're still waiting for Bryce Love, who's the fastest out of that entire group. Where um, is he? Is he hurt? Where is yeah, he? Yeah, he's been hurt. Like, he, he's, he's around. I don't know if they're going to activate him. I haven't okay. looked at the I, I haven't looked at the uh, injury report this week. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean right. that's right. it's too much too much risk and stuff. No, that's a but that's a I don't that's know a that good team, man. that's a good sounding oh. that's a good sounding backfield. Hey, too much Washington football team talk. A, I haven't slipped so, up on that. I want yeah. to, I'm just no, going with no, Wift. No, you no, you get props for that. Um I'm just going with Wift. So another game that that was uh making headwaves was uh the Saints and Bucks. Did you say headwaves? I know. I don't I don't I don't know. That's something I can't I can't get. I don't have the brush or the correct. <laughs> <laughs> also, I hear if you if you use the brush upside down, you just can't get them at all. <laughs> Harkening back to last week. Okay. Saints and Twelve. Twist, not waves, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean both I can't get that I can't get either of these. So. Go eat a fucking latte and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. so. I get I get those I get those ju- those curly uh sideburns. That yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. get, so. You're, gonna, you. you're selling jewels in fucking Manhattan now? Yeah. Hey, come Lord. to my, right. my store. <laughs> I have good things for you. Good things. Did y'all watch the Saints and Bucks game? Yeah. I did not, because my girlfriend was completely over watching football after I had her watch to watch the football. I, I watched every second of that game. I am in the same boat as you, could Kadeem. <laughs> so I understand. <laughs> Well, I did. She was nice about it, though. She was nice. She was really nice about it. She was like, I, I was like, you know, you could turn to something else. She's like, are you sure? I know football is your thing. I was like, no, you watched the Washington football team thing with me. So we watch HGTV for the rest of the evening. I heard a faint laugh. <laughs> I, I love some HGTV. Let's. Oh my property God. Brothers sucks ass. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I hate Pro- that goddamn Pro- show. Property Brothers? It's trash. Yeah, that, that show's trash. Well, look, I listen. At I least, like the at least you can watch that. I had to watch. watch. 
I'm sorry. Tele- no, no Telenova. <laughs> uh, Grand Hotel, the Spanish series on Netflix. I hate it. I hate it. That's just un-American. <laughs> Yeah, Spanish. Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, football. it's football Sunday. Just, yeah. Damn it. No, no, no. I watched I watched the Raiders, right? But yeah, she hates it. She's not a fan. But I did get her into Formula One, but we'll talk about that later. All right. So you watched the Ryan, you watched the uh the yeah. Bucks Saints game. I know um, everything as far as like what happened. I got my own take on it, but like what did you see? Uh so <clears throat> Jameis Winston. Went 30 and 30 last year, as as we've said before. Most entertaining player in the NFL. And Tom Brady comes in and throws two interceptions and a pick six. And on the first interception, it was Mike Evans breaking off on a route that he should never have broken off. And then Tom Brady was throwing to where he should have been. Not Tom Brady's fault. That was still high, though. Huh? That, th- that, that throw was still high. Tom Brady, Even if wasn't, kept going. Tom Brady wasn't great, but then he had to start forcing passes. And Tom Brady is not Tom Brady of 10 years ago. And he can't really force a pass. He doesn't have this, the zip that you need to, to force a pass. And he was overthrowing people. So Tom Brady, I mean, again, new team, no preseason. You know, it's, it's hard to get into a rhythm. Um, and then on the other side, the Saints just look dominant. <clears throat> the Saints defense is good. I don't know whether I can attribute that to them being as good as they looked or no. Their their defense is really good. Or but you want to pick them up in fantasy against the Raiders this week? Or I mean, and I don't think Tampa Bay's front line is great to protect Brady because he went down a lot, and some of that was pro- like protection sacks. Um, but man, the the Bucks did not look good. But and I the mean, Saints look really it's, good. It's week one. And yeah, like, I mean, yeah. So I, I mean, Tom Brady, he's, he's the best quarterback in the league. I don't care that there's other quarterbacks that are younger than him. No, he's, he's the not most, the best. He's, he's the, the most proven. Team. He's the most proven quarterback in the league. I think he, I think he can get it. He can write that ship because he's got he's some proven fucking, on the Patriots. He hasn't proven got, shit on the Bucks. But he's got weapons around him. So if he can get on the same page like Mike Evans, if Mike Evans had a decent oh. quarterback throwing to him, he's a top five, top six wide receiver in the league. He's got it. He's got what he needs. Mike Evans is hurt. Put it together. Look, you can give, you can, you can give, you can make a lot of excuses for what it is the Bucks did. I mean, you're talking about Bruce Arians' team, who he has complicated ass offenses. You got a complete squad of nothing but new people. The only people really remaining from the last year is Godwin and Evans, and they're asking them to run completely different routes because the route tree is going to be different under Brady than oh, yeah. Jamie is. Because I'm sorry, Tom can't throw the same ball that Jameis did. He might be more accurate, but he's not. It's, it reminds me of this. Somebody told me something like a decade ago. Maybe more than a decade ago. It was like if Brett Favre has a cannon, Chad Pennington has a water pistol. Tom Brady is a lot closer to the water pistol than he is the cannon at this point in his career. Yeah. Jameis can oh, throw it out of the stadium. <laughs> so you're talking about all these guys. LaShawn McCoy's on that team. I think people forgot. The, they got Leonard Fournette's on that team. Like, there's a bunch of new guys that they're asking to go out and do. Like, you got Rob Gronkowski, who looked basically like an afterthought on that team, even though probably mm-hmm. if you practice and everything, they looked like they were going to gel up as much. But Rob Gronkowski's not O.J. Howard at this point, right? Yeah. He's not even Cameron Bray. Like, he's it all just needs time. They just need time. But yeah, I will say this, and bringing a segue into another Did game it, that happened, is play? that if we're looking at – look, at the end of the day – I was high on the Bucks, but I think that that made that had a lot more to do with the fact that I'm just a Tom Brady stan. But I always stood stand firm that I thought the more important of the duo between Belichick and Brady was Belichick. And right now, what Belichick looked like with Cam Newton and that offense with Josh McDaniels, Ooh. I'm saying right now, like I, they're gonna win a lot of games. I don't know if Tampa Bay's got to get their shit together. I, I think the con, I think the Cam Newton and what the Patriots are going to do are going to make Tom look like an idiot. They scored twenty one points. You don't need to score 40, 30, whatever. It's always been the Patriot way. If you look at the Patriots as far as when they've been the most dominant, as far as that, uh, as far as the point differential, well, we're looking at 07, We saw how that season ended. Majority of the times when they actually win a Super Bowl, it's when they're keeping those games fairly close. They're running the ball at a certain clip, which now with Cam Newton, they can actually do that from the quarterback position. And Cam Newton ran the ball 15 times for 75 yards, which is five yards a carry, but he ran the ball 15 times. Right. 
But here's what That's I think a lot of people, the clock. Here's what a lot coming of people off are, the injury, though. Here's what a lot of people aren't understanding. Who's the offensive coordinator in New England? McDaniels. When McDaniels was a head coach in Denver, who was his quarterback? Tebow. Right? You have somebody that can do everything that Tim Tebow could do. It's not even comparable Tebow. between the two. But you saw that McDaniels took them to the playoffs, and Tim Tebow has playoff win under his belt, under that utility belt. What in the hell is he going to be able to do with Cam Newton, who's a bigger body than Tim Tebow, more durable than Tim Tebow, and is going to be able to run certain things where he's not getting hit? But like if you saw Cam Newton get those 15 carries, how many times have you seen him get smacked? I don't know. I didn't watch the game. What? It wasn't. That's the it wasn't? Is that they yeah. know, they right. understand, they know right. how it is. So if he's, if, if he's running and he's not getting, like, lit up, then, all right, fair point. Hey, but, and where is where's Tim Tebow now? College football? He's a Matt. He's still oh, really? no. okay. Yeah. Well, congrats to him. Congrats to y'all. Well, no, um, he's he's technically a Met, but there's there's no minor league this year, so he's probably he's probably praying or something. I'm just always assuming he's on some mission trip somewhere in South America. Yeah, good for him. I I think Tim Tebow, as as much shit as I used to give him, stand up guy. I like him a lot. Um. So, like, moving on from week one, let's go into week two, right? So. Um, Kadeen and I won the first one. No, nah, I'll tell you the games. I, I got them all written. Say, I want to see. Okay. It. I, say it. I was like, I got them all written down. Um. So we do our. Yeah, I or forgot like, about the Thursday oh, night game. Okay. Before we do that, can mm-hmm. we talk about how awful the Thursday night game was? <laughs> Why? Yeah, like, I get it. Let's have the Ohio Bowl week one, but still, I totally disagree. I I completely and it was utterly so, disagree with you. It was so hard to watch. What? It was, uh, the, the, that, Thursday, the Thursday night games very, are, are typically was, trash. That was a bad game. They have bad teams. Like Joe Burrow. Yeah, I feel so bad, bad teams. for Joe Burrow. Bad teams, Kadeem. Bad you teams. You see what he said after the game? Joe Burrow said, I don't think I've ever lost uh, two games in a row in my life. <laughs> there is no more – there is no division in all of football – more exciting to see where it is they are and where it is they're going than the AFC North. I mean, there was well, Mark no- Jackson, Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield. I'm so, like the I'm, only one you said that that's somewhat like exciting to watch for me would be Lamar Jackson. Joe, did you see Joe what Burrow, Joe Burrow Burrow's did in this game? Yeah, he, sixty-one passes. Sixty-one. Pa- he completed 61. one pass. In the, dude, it's not Joe he Burrow. Is, Joe Burrow is going to be a problem. I think the, the biggest takeaway from Cincinnati this game was what the hell is going on with A.J. Green? Um, and I just oh, feel yeah. terrible for A.J. Green. He's like Calvin Johnson light in the sense that your career has just been wasted. Like, it's just it, – God. And he just didn't look – I think he's still hurt and he's still just trying to soldier on through it. Um, then they, Odell Beckham came back and he's doing stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me Cleveland as far as their running game is not excited shit to watch. Kareem Chubb, right? Nick Chubb, are you kidding me? What game were you watching or not watching? You weren't look, excited about seeing that goddamn game. It, damn. it, it was the I think the lack of defense and then just some very Baker Mayfield ish and obviously rookie quarterback. Then you plays. never know when Miles Garrett's gonna hit somebody in the head with a helmet. I mean, come on, <laughs> I just don't care. What do you no, want? It's, it was it. It to me was <laughs> like not. I want to see like a. Like a Giants Patriots matchup on Thursday. To me, it's I don't want to see branding. It's I don't even want to see the Giants. It's to me, it's complete branding. It's that we are at a certain age. We're all around 30, 30 something. Yeah. We all know that when it comes to the Bengals and it comes to the Browns, they're always going to disappoint. But what we got to realize that the teams that we're seeing from those guys right now are not the teams that they were five years ago. They're not the teams that they were ten years ago. They're just not. I mean, if you want to look at Cincinnati, I guess they were exciting about a decade, a little more than a decade ago, when you had the Carson Palmer, All right, how uh, about TJ this? Hoosh Manzara, and mm-hmm. Shadow Shosinka. Hoosh. Wait, is um, you, know, you know what the you know what the Thursday night game is this week? Go on. The Dolphins Jaguars. Oh, uh, so they're just going to be trash. That game was not good. Two is two is going to get a start. I don't think so. You guys are sleeping on that one too, because Gardner Minshew. Three. Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew is, has the best he, mustache in the game. But did you see Gardner Minshew's stat line from this? Yes, he's on, my, he's on my fantasy team. The real deal. Yeah. I don't know what Miami's doing as far as Fitzpatrick. I did see Fitzpatrick, like, 
pulled some magic out of a hat and got this scramble and everything around. Dude, but he threw three picks and no touchdowns. He's garbage. I'm sorry. The teams, the teams that we ex- – I'm looking across the NFL right now, and I don't necessarily see a lot of teams that I'm not excited to see play. Indianapolis, not really that excited to see play. I mean, if Flip um, Rib, I love Jonathan Taylor. That dude looks like right, he can Like week four, I can, I can watch it just because of one of the teams. It's the Broncos and Jets. Yeah, I mean, I can the, watch the that Jets, game. Jets, I don't care about watching. Me neither. I don't, ca- I don't care about them either, but – I want to Broncos, see what Jerry, I, don't care about it. I want to see what Jerry Judy does. Okay. I'm more seeing what Noah Fant does. Like, see? but, but there's somebody. Also, as far as also, the teams themselves, Albert, Albert, uh, 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 how do you say his last name? <laughs> I don't know what you're a, trying to say. A cook, a cook, Benham, a cook, Benham. The Are tight you end reading from the Torah. Wow. All right. <laughs> no, I would so, be reading no. right to left. <laughs> All right. No. No. We're, Do it the other way. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I gotta I gotta flip my book this way. Anyway, all right, let's make our picks of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we're skipping all this shit that you just said. All right, Giants Bears. No, you do you, the Torah. Giants Bears. The Torah you open this way and then read that way. Giants Bears. Read backwards. Um, Bears. Bears. All right. They were my Super Bowl pick last year, and Mitchell Trubisky doesn't look like a complete piece of shit right now. Yeah. I mean, he, he will start overthrowing receivers at some point. I don't want to hear that. Rams, Eagles. Oh, give me the Rams. Yeah. I think the Eagles I, front, the offensive line is still hurt. Wait, they, they got a couple pieces back, but I don't think they have enough. I'll say, I see what the Washington defense did to them, and I don't think, I don't think Aaron Donald makes it any easier for them. Yeah, no. Oh, Aaron Donald's going to kill what he did to the Cowboys. Carson. You saw what he did to the Cowboys? So, um, Falcons, Cowboys. Hold on, what are your picks? I haven't heard your. What are your oh, I picked the Bears, um, the Rams, and the next I'm doing the Cowboys. Cowboys, Falcons, who you got? Ooh. Uh, Cowboys. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Panthers, Bucks. Bucks. Okay. I'm going to go Panthers. I like the storyline of the Bucks being 0-2 and then Tom Brady turning it on. Okay. Uh, Niners, Jets. Niners. Niners. By, by seven. T. Broncos, <laughs> Steelers. Give me the Steelers. Yeah, same. We're all the same except for Kadeen right now on the, the one Panthers pick. Uh, Jaguars, Titans. 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 Okay. I'm taking the Jags. Okay. Lions, Packers, Packers. Yeah. Uh, Packers, Aaron looked too good last week. I'll take, yeah, I'll take A-Rod. Aaron okay. looks mad. Aaron looks like he's mad, but he's also having yeah. fun again. It's scary. Yeah. It's he's scary. Got, is it Bryce Love that's behind him? Bryce Love's in Washington. I mean, uh, Jordan Love. Jordan right. Love. Yeah. Um, Bills, Dolphins. The game that I will refuse to watch any second of. <clears throat> I'm taking the uh, Bills. I'm taking, I'm taking the Bills. Okay. Although, if they do, st- if Tua comes into that game, it could change pretty quickly. Um, Vikings, Colts. Vikings. Okay. Colts. Okay. I got the Vikings. Um, Washington versus Cardinals. Give me that Washington football team, baby. And I think that it's going to be a problem. Cardinals. I will take the whiff. I'm taking the Cardinals. I mean, that's the smart pick, but that defense, if they can contain Kyler. They got Hopkins now, too. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, big. one of the – all I know is that Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray, whose careers are kind of linked ever since college, uh, one of these two guys is going to be 2-0. Yeah, sure. This week, so. um, Ravens, Texans. Ravines. Give me the Ravens. Okay. They looked really good, too. Yeah. God damn. Uh, Chiefs, Chargers. Chiefs. Mm. Oh, pick your boy Tyrod. You know you want to. <laughs> I mean, they didn't look bad week one, but I'm Are you not. Good? No, Chiefs. Chiefs. Okay. Chiefs. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an idiot. I just look like one. <laughs> uh, Pat, Seahawks. Where are they playing? At yeah, Seahawks. Seahawks. But does that even matter anymore? Yeah, no. The man's not there. Do they get to pump in louder volume? Because it's usually nah. not. Nah. Dude, did you see how good Russ looked week one? 
I'm yeah, taking, it's I'm gonna taking be, the it's Seahawks. Gonna be to go against the Seahawks, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say the Patriots just because I'm feeling it. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. You're all picking the Saints. I know it. With the Saints uh, Raiders? Yeah, Monday Night Football. Uh, that, 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 that. Yeah, Saints. I know. Go ahead. What about <laughs> yeah. you, Ryan? All right, Saints. Cool. Who are you picking? I don't think we're going to win, but I'm picking the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Man, I'm so nervous of this game. It's like the first game. Like if if there were fans there, I would feel more confident in picking the Raiders. But oh, you guys are playing in Vegas. Yeah, it's the first home game, so we get to see the Death Star. Death Star explosion. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking the same thing. We're just gonna the, look, the look, Saints listen. are gonna come out to listen. Jedi music. You know, <laughs> and like I, I, I legit like hate you, Kadeem, because oh. now like um. During, like, all the press conferences, like, this week when they're talking to John Gruden and Mayock and all them, like, there's one reporter for ESPN that asked, um, he was like, so, John, what did you think? Like, I don't know if you're a fan of Star Wars or anything, but what did you think when Mark Davis gave the address to the team and he announced that, like, he was like, welcome to the Death Star, where teams' dreams come to die. And John Gruden was like, I don't give a shit about Death Star to be. I mean, uh, about Star Wars to be honest with you. And then Jason Witten was like, "Yeah, I had goosebumps." And in the back of my mind, the whole time, I'm like, "That shit blew up so many times." <laughs> I was like, "I hate Kadeem now." <laughs> but, but, but it lost. sounds it sounds got, great. It John sounds great. Gruden, John Gruden doesn't care about Star Wars unless Hooters is doing a cross promotion. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, funny bitch, right? <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's, uh, look, the Trump, the Trump campaign tried to do the same thing and they fired the asshole to compare it there <laughs> to the Death Star. Anyway. All right. Okay. All right. Look, all right. Tiebreaker now. Um, Dolphins, Jags. Oh, the Thursday night game. Yeah. Just in case. Uh, uh, I'm going to go Dolphins because I think Tool will be starting by then. God. Can we, can we change our pick midweek if we hear that Tua is starting? Because Ryan Fitz magic is Ryan Fitz tragic right now. No, this is just the tiebreaker for yeah, this week's Jags. Okay. I mean, uh, you, can't, you can't bring Tua into that, that very okay team and beat what I'm picking, got going on. I'm picking Dolphins because the Jaguars are trying to lose. So They're not trying – Y'all it looked like it looked like they, I know. And it looked like they were off. giving the Look, season no, no, away, no, and then I'm they not, pulled I'm that not, out. I'm not talking about the players of the team. I'm talking about the like the GM and all them. They're they trading need, away all their players. Yeah, but they don't need a quarterback. What? Why would they, why would they bomb this season? They I'm picking. Well, they want to turn Trevor Lawrence into Blake Bortles 2.0. Like I don't understand. Like, like it's not. Would you got, rather have? Would you rather have Trevor Lawrence or Gardner Minshew? Gardner right Minshew. now, Gardner Minshew is proven. Product. He's proven, and he does his proven work. How? He does his stretches in the locker room in tidy whiteies and sunglasses. Has, Give me that man on my team because you like him. All right, whatever. No, because he's balling. <laughs> he's, he he had like 300 yards and three touchdowns last week. I don't understand what everybody's saying. He doesn't have a cast around him. Name a running back on Jacksonville's team. They traded away the best one. I rest my case. Like, if they, <laughs> like they don't have anybody, and he's still putting up these numbers. If I'm the Jaguars, what I'm trying to do is rebuild the defense that we had, and then outside of that, and then you traded away. Them. You traded away your best D lineman. Because at the end of the day, all of the D linemen would just cost them entirely too much money. Uh, they enough games. They still need to build more of a team around. James uh, mm-hmm. Robinson is their running back, and Chris Thompson from from the Washington Football Team. Yeah, and then I mean, in fairness, they he went up against Flip Riv and yeah. beat him, beat him with a worse team. I was just saying, everybody's kind of sleeping on. I think Gardner is going to be an issue in this league. I could be wrong. Like it, they're they're quarterbacks who put together runs. It happens in every sport. You could be it like, does. Yeah, it was in a German. And, it was and, Fitz, and, yeah, Fitz and I'm like, year. I'm like, okay, and you just called him Fish Tragic like two minutes ago. So what I'm saying is, like, let's just give him time and see what happens. Like, Gard- Gardner was good last I'll, year. I'll talk to you guys about it after week three. Gardner week is, four. as your as your shirt would would describe him, skilled. I mean, if you're starting quarterback in the NFL, you got to be skilled. <laughs> well, y'all did start Jamarcus Russell. <laughs> he was skilled. 
Just not at the right things. He's skilled eating. at eating. He was skilled as fuck. Throwing a football from his knees because that helps. He was skilled. <laughs> That's a skill. Parting with it's, two, it may two not be chains the one. on a Saturday night. Have skilled. you done it? Have you done it? It's a skill. I am not a professional quarterback. It's I'm a not skill. A professional. Parting with two chains. I don't it's think that requires a lot of skill. Just stay awake. It's a skill. You have a skill. You have that skill too. You stay awake. I don't. All I need is cocaine, and we'll be all right. Wow. Cocaine. All right. So, moving on from from uh, the NFL, let's move over to. All right. Let's just basketball. end the episode. I'm sorry. No. Go. Let's, let's let's move on to basketball. Yeah. Right. We didn't we didn't necessarily talk about the the collapse of the Clippers because that happened since the last pod. We didn't talk about the NBA until my final thoughts. Period. But okay. And then I I did I because not nothing was nuggets, happening. What? Huh? The Nuggets what? are. Good. The Nuggets are going to get swept. I see. That's what everybody said. They they were down three one against the Clippers, and they had a couple losses where they lost by twenty points. There's a difference between the Clippers and the Lakers. And I I agree, but they are very good at adjusting, and the Lakers have proven that they don't adjust very well. Sometimes. Okay. No. I, I don't think they're going to. There's get no swept. adjustments that the the Nuggets can really do here. I mean, like. Who, they have nobody that can guard AD. They are just going to have to outshoot them, and they can do that. Jamal Murray can put up points. I'm not saying they're going to win this series yeah, by any means. They can put up points, but they're not going to get swept. They're going to win again. I don't. I think that I think right now anybody that says that they know exactly what's going to happen is full of shit. Because right now I don't think the Lakers have actually been really tested since they've gotten into the bubble. Like there's been a matter of like when there was the, still the regular season games kind of going through. You saw the Lakers were kind of coasting. Then what do you think is going to happen? Then? I think they'll get. I think the Lakers are going to make the championship. I, that's without question. But it's like I don't. I just. I don't know if I'm going to speak with any conviction that they're going to sweep them or like if the Nuggets are able to pull off this. Like in a if they're able to get like a a four two or maybe they win it in seven. I'm not going to be like completely blown away because I mean right now I think a lot of what happened in basketball is just everybody being so hyperbolic as far as everything goes. Like, if I'm looking at what it is we thought about the Clippers going into this year and how it is that we kind of overrated the team itself. And it's I didn't like, do that. I'm saying collectively, most people. Oh, but, like, like, how I looked at the Clippers was I looked at how they played. They had the whole, like, we'll turn, like, the switch will turn on and some shit. And then, like, when the Mavs played them, like, you could see it in certain games where they just – they had no answers. And then you had another game where they, like, played like how they're supposed to play. They had, pan they had pandemic P, man. Are we going to have the conversation whether or not Kawhi is overrated? He, he is not. Yeah, we could. He had – um, I think I'm putting, the, I'm putting all the blame on Paul George, man. No, nah, you can't I, – I can't put it all on Paul George. Like, Doc he, Rivers didn't really make adjustments. Also, Doc Rivers like, – In that situation. He uh, – I'll give him – I'll give him until the end of Oktoberfest, and he'll be retired or fired. Or no, no, you got you got to bring the whole squad back. Yeah, no, you can't. Yeah. you can't have that kind of collapse with that kind of team, and not put the responsibility on somebody. The responsibility should go around, but they still deserve another shot. The whole squad. Uh, okay, I I would disagree because. Yeah, you have you have too good of a team and an aging too good of a team to be putting up that kind of performance. It's like the it's like it's like with the Caps. No nah, man, that, like, that kind of collapse. You got you have to shake things. No, nah, there's, there's a difference. There's a difference. I don't, I don't think Doc's holding them accountable. You they had multiple games where they played like complete ass. All right, you, do, Doc, you can't have that in the playoffs. I understand. The only Doc, coach to have lost three, three series after yeah. being up three one. That's three times. Something. Now. Of course, but I love Doc Rivers. He's one, but he, he's one, he's one, right? Yeah. So, if you look at the team they have all year, everybody has been talking about how deep this team is, and the only issue is chemistry. Now, going looking back at it, I said this like months ago talking about how some player, like there was reports that some players were pissed off at how. Um, certain players on the team were treated like with like preferential treatment. 
And then you can look at like certain ways of how like Kawhi was looking at Paul George and stuff like that. Like so like with disgust and disappointment. He was he but, played he played disappointing basketball. But I yeah. and then Paul George is like like exit exit uh interview or whatever, he was talking about how the team just needs more time, like more practice and like more games together to build the chemistry, which <laughs> is true. If Kawhi only played sixty games, like that's a lot of missed time. Yeah. If Kawhi's telling people like, yeah, like I'll come here, but I may miss some practice days. Like that's a, that means something. Giannis to Giannis to LA. No. I'm saying I'm saying right now is that like I understand that concept and I do think the LA, if they were given more time, would be better because after time you do have a team that gets better. But if I'm looking at the landscape of the West, or I'm looking at the landscape of just the NBA right now, I'm saying that their talent to me has a certain ceiling. And even if I'm looking at some of the guys that they have around them when it comes to having the ball in your hand when it comes to crunch time, right now the only guy that's actually a proven product in that realm is Kawhi. And as far as Paul George or Pat Beverly or any one of those other youngins, Lou Williams. Really, Lou Williams really, is closer. I really think that there's a ceiling and there's a cap. I don't think the Lakers are going to get worse. I don't think the rest of the NBA is going to get worse. I don't think Denver's getting worse over time. I like I look at I look at Kawhi and I say that if Kawhi stayed in Toronto, they're still playing. Yeah. yeah. Like is a there there's a drop off that we all thought wasn't going to be the case. And I don't think it's just chemistry. I think there is a certain thing to say about talent. There's a reason that you have like uh LeBron and A D once they link up, you just got those two kind of dominating. Hold on. Are you saying the Clippers don't have talent? Like I'm not enough the talent? Don't, enough I'm saying, enough talent? I'm saying that right now when a coach comes to shove as far as in the playoffs, I don't trust them to to, to get it done. Okay. In the seven-game series. I think they'll always be in the conversation, but I don't think they're ever going to be able to take it across that line right now. And even if I'm looking at Kawhi, like Kawhi's a proven product as far as last year, and as far as even San Antonio, but even if you look at the San Antonio team, if I'm going to be completely honest, was the MVP in the finals? Yes. But what he's the the fourth option. He's like the fourth option. Right. He wasn't the guy in San Antonio. Yeah, I I agree with you. Like, even at last year, like, there was a lot of those moments where I'm like, give me fucking Fred Bland Fleet over everybody right now. Like, there was certain moments in Toronto. And right now, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the Clippers, I'm like, if Kawhi is a dog in certain realms, but never when he's the top guy, who is it that I'm looking to to really take them over the top? Like, I, I don't, I don't see Lou Williams being that guy. I don't see Pat Beverly being that guy. I don't see, I absolutely don't see Paul George being that guy. So it's like, what do you do? They're going to need somebody else. They're going to need more nah. talent on that team, in my opinion. All right, so what, what would you do? Because I don't know. It, they're, it, they're called the most talented team in the NBA, like, for a I, reason. But I think that a lot of that comes to people blaming Russell Westbrook as far as the ills of what happened in Oklahoma. I think that a lot of people are downplaying just where the talent level is as far as the guys that were around Russ. Um, I, I think that there's also a realm of people kind of overrating exactly what Kawhi means to a team or how it is that he plays and what it is that translates in the wins. Um, I think there's a lot of that just people kind of harping on that bandwagon because we need the storyline as far as, like, who was going to rival the Lakers. Not to mention everything that happened as far as the storyline when it came to who, where Kawhi was going to go. That once they found out that you had like Kawhi and you had Paul George, who's finally going to be free from Russell Westbrook, like KD and like Harden. But I'm sorry, Paul George is not Harden. He's not KD. So, and I and I think a lot, a lot of the the Clippers are so deep conversation was because they had a Lou Williams on the bench who could come off and score 20, 30 points. Six man of the year. Yeah, I, and the Montrez year. Herald, six man of the year. Right. I get it, but you? having having a couple of players on the bench when your starting five is not playing well doesn't work. Like you can be as deep as the day is long, and if your starting five is not linking up together, you're going to lose ball games. So they right there, have you the just local- said what I was saying: chemistry. Yeah, you need more games together. Right. So but- you don't break it up after one year. But I, I would blame the coach. Give them one cat. other year. There's I a get, cat. Get, yeah. Give them one year. Like, I, I understand. They're going to run it back. They have it's to run a pandemic. It back. You have no, to run I, it back. You okay. have to run it back. If okay. you're LA, you have mm-hmm. to run it back. That's what, what I'm saying. saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, if they run it back right now, 
-hmm. they're out at the exact same time next year that they're out this year, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think they make it any further than this. If I don't think so. About, if you want to talk about a chemistry thing as far as rotating guys on the bench, how about we look at Miami, what it is that they do as far as rotating their shooters in and out. That's how, regardless of fucking chemistry, you have talent and you know how to utilize said talent, who the most underrated coach in the NBA right now is Eric Spolcher, who we all thought was just a fucking lemming to whatever it is that Pat Riley was doing for all those years, and we were so fucking wrong about that shit. Like, it was one of those things where you could see what it is they're doing, regardless of how, bloody, how much time they've had with each other, but if you're utilizing the players the way that you need to utilize the players, you, you can it. win. The Emerald Lagasse over now, there. They are, and I will. And if we're going to get any further than this, Miami is my pick. They are going too. It's my pick for the ship I, right now. I said this many Lakers. episodes ago that the Heat were going to win the East. I said it, and I meant it because they got Emerald Lagasse. Bam! Out of bio. Let's go. Yeah, but still, the, the Lakers going to win. Dude, that block on Jason Tatum will forever resonate in my soul because Jason it's Tatum was. For sure, he was in the air 18 feet, and Bam said, no. No, it's you shall not pass. He's it's LeBron and the heat block. Like, it's a, it's an all-timer. Like, yeah. yeah. They're, 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 those they're, team, that team is dog. They are dogs. Dude, right. and if, if right, they can play that well we against – If they can play that well against the Celtics, who – by all accounts, should have just cruised through the East. And we'll see what happens with the Celtics after they had their team meeting and all that shit. So. Yeah. So, um, other basketball news that came out was Giannis was named the MVP. Yeah. Um, did you guys see LeBron's press conference last night? I didn't see it, but I saw his tweet. Okay. I didn't, so I didn't get on my burner account, so. He they, – they asked him, like, wh like, how he felt about it, and he was honest. He said he was pissed off. I don't think he, – he wasn't saying that he was he, – he didn't say that Giannis didn't deserve it. He was saying the fact that he only got 16 first-place votes. Yep. Which I I I understand. Like, I view that as a little disrespectful too. So – and this is always going to be the argument. So, for me, the MVP is you are the most valuable player for your team. And I don't think if – there's an argument to be made that it could be LeBron, but I don't think you can look at the Bucks and how far they've come and not say that the reason they are as good as they are is just because of Giannis. And you can see that because they came out after they lost and said, hey, we're going to spend the money to put pieces around you so that you can contend, meaning you're the only reason that we're this good. They played, they played well when he was injured. Didn't they win that game? Yeah, yeah, but they would they wouldn't have gotten to that point without Giannis. Okay, falling. like if yeah, but the Lakers wouldn't have gotten to where they are without LeBron. Like, I think that Anthony the, Davis was putting up fucking buckets. The NBA who facilitated the, the offense for that. Yeah, my point is you take LeBron out and he had sat for some games and eighty ball, right? It's it the Bucks as a team. Yes, they played well, but who was the most valuable player on that team? Without a question, it's Giannis. I think there, there are two points. Number one, did you all think about the question I asked you last week? Number two, as far as Giannis at center. Number two is the yeah. – I don't think the NBA does anybody any favors as far as when they announce the MVP. When you're looking at what it is that people have done over the course of the playoffs, and especially if you're looking at this year with the gap that we had because of COVID, I think that a lot of people are so far removed over what Giannis was doing in the season – compared to what it is that we've seen when the Bucks came back, that you're kind of like, how the fuck is this even possible? Right, and the MVP is based on the regular season performance. It's not yeah. based right. on postseason. Yeah. So I get where LeBron's saying as far as only getting 16 votes. I don't think it's – I think it's hard to argue anybody saying that the best player in the league right now is not Giannis. And I think it's hard to argue with anybody saying that – Kind of to Ryan's point, that if it's not for Giannis, they're not where it is they are right now. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of hard to say that for anybody because unless you play enough games without somebody, you really don't know. If LeBron was out for an X amount of time, I don't know if AD just fucking carries the Lakers to where it is they need to that's be. That's what I'm – So I, I don't – but that's the thing is, like, you, you when you're dealing in we these – We don't know. But you're, when you're dealing in these what Fs, like, I mm -hmm. don't necessarily have a huge issue with Giannis being the MVP this year. Me neither. Looking at what it is that he did over the regular season. I get mm -hmm. LeBron's frustration. I think LeBron's also pulling a Bill Belichick move, which is using anything he can for billboard material just to be angry to have a chip on. But no, no, but I want to say something, though. Like, to, to refute that just a little bit. 
Mm -hmm. This sounds like something that he's been thinking about for a while because he brought up a great point in the, in the, um, the interview, right? Or the press conference. He said he, he had, a, he had issues with the, the whole voting system in itself because look, he brought up, um, Mark Gasol won the defensive player of the year in 2012. I think that's what you said. Mm -hmm. But then Mark Gasol was also second team all defense. That makes no sense. And then he said, once that happened, he was like, okay, I can see how this is going to go. That's the thing. I think the whole voting process, which is what I'm saying. That's is, what you're saying. Yep. They, they don't do themselves any favors as far as being open to a lot of criticism as far as like the way things go. Um, I think of any league, they probably do the worst job of any of them as far as like the way that they announce it and also announcing what it is they're taking into consideration when they're actually doing it. It's yep. really, really hard. And then not to mention if we're looking at the votes as far as, um, or if you make NBA uh, first team, second team, first team defense, whatever, are those the same voters that do as far as the MVP? Are they using the same process as far as the MVP? What's happening? So like, have yeah, no idea. And Bill should have been all NBA. It's bullshit if, that he wasn't. So it's like when I'm looking at that all around, I'm like, I, I don't know. So I get LeBron's gripes. I don't necessarily, if LeBron's gripes are more about, hey, we need to look at the voting process. It's not, what was me? I should have gotten more votes. I'm more apt to get, I'm more apt to get with him on that. But it, it right now, I think because of the LeBron just hate in the atmosphere that always exists, not to mention, I don't like the fucker ever since he got to LA and I'm never going to root for him again because he's in a fucking Lakers uniform. But uh, there's just a matter of like, it just sounds like he's crying, crying over spilt milk. Like it's just sour grapes at this point. And it, it, it's kind of hard to read between the lines because of how much shit you have stacked when it comes to looking through this. It's hard to look at LeBron with this very like unbiased view when he's so polarizing in the sense of just the way he makes you feel about things or you, it's really hard to just take everything with a grain of salt and be unbiased when you're looking at anything that he says. I, it, it, I just think it, it's – I'm admitting my faults when it comes to that when looking at LeBron nowadays. I, it was a lot easier for me to do it when he was wearing a Heat uniform or when he was wearing a Cleveland Cavaliers uniform, but I just fucking hate the Lakers. So, I think I – don't really, I don't really hate any any team. Like I, like, I talk shit about, like, the Chiefs and all them. Like, I don't really care. Like – I think I think the only reason LeBron went. To I'm the taking Lakers, your fan. I'm taking your Raider fan card because you should. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't. The only, you gotta the only hate reason, the Chiefs. The only huh? reason LeBron went hate to the I Lakers. I don't like them, but it's you not gotta like, hate. Like, you gotta hate the Heat Chiefs. No, nah, like I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. No, no, I'm tired. I'm tired of that shit. Like as a, as a fan, I'm not gonna let any fucking team destroy my mute my mood for a whole week just because of how they did against another team or if He's, another team wins. I'm tired of that shit. I've, they, I've felt that for so they're, long. They're going to so do that now for a I decade. just don't, like, I don't give it as much energy as I used to. I think football is a little different than basketball because I think the football players actually do care about the rivalries yeah, for the most I care, part. I care about the rivalries. Like, I play football. I care about the rivalries. But at the same time, it's not, it's not, it doesn't run my life as much as it used to. I'm not sort of saying to run your life. No, no, but, but, I'm but I'm saying it used to run my life. That's like, fair. And, I'm, and you're, you're finding now, a healthy balance. Right, and now it's more so like I, I'd rather just not like feel any animosity Dude, towards anybody. Like, listen so to me. Like, listen, just listen you're to me. You're a Chiefs fan. Your team sucks, but if you're whatever. a sports fan, fan is short for fanatic. If you're a sports fan, you're already a fucking idiot, and I consider us all fucking idiots. Like we're mm -hmm. rooting, we run around with another man's name on the back of our shirts, rooting and giving all this stock to a fucking game. Like it's it's stupid, but yeah. it's it's still what it is, and it's part of it. I just think that the rivalry aspect of it, you'll never see me root for anybody wearing a fucking star on their helmet as long as I live, unless they get out of that, you yeah, know. I'm not saying you got to root for them. But I'm but. saying there is a certain level of hate, the same way that there's a certain level of love. But I'm never going to say, here's where we, as fanatics, we can kind of, there's an acceptance of our, idiot, of our idiocy that you have to accept when you're being a sports fan, which is if you say you hate or even if you love these teams, why should I be loving some organization that's making money? And I talk about loving them in the same way that I could talk about loving a family member or a girlfriend. You're a fucking idiot. Like that's fair point. Fair point. Fair point. You know what I'm yeah. saying. And I couldn't. I couldn't switch my fandom from the Redskins to the New York Giants. The what team? Both are fucking the out. whiffed to the New York Giants. Well, at the right. time, at the time, did they you were just still do the? <laughs> All right. uh, I couldn't switch to the Giants because I hate the Giants. All right. 
So one one of the last one of the last subjects we gotta get to is I'm liking um, this upset. The the name are abuse. Kadeem, oh, here's my Kadeem, Kadeem, no, 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 no. You're gonna like this. Okay. Because I, I wanna I wanna I wanna set this up to you to see like how you would how you would react, okay? So you're playing a game and um you're playing like you're playing football soccer, like you're running around like and all this other shit. And one of the players from the other team comes to you and calls you like a fucking monkey or some shit like that. I did that. see this. No, no. What would you do? Dep- if I'm, I'm playing football? You're playing. You no, know, like you're playing soccer. Um, I'm going to kill myself because I'm playing soccer. No, I'm joking. I'm the, no. What would you do? <laughs> um, I would probably, I'm going to, I'm going to at least say something back. I'm probably no, going to. Like you're talking back and forth and he's still giving you shit. And then the ref doesn't do anything. Like you talk to the ref, he don't do anything. And then you play again and like, he's still talking shit to you. What do you do? I mean, they use that to fuel him to fuck him up or like to play. Fuck him up how? To oh, outplay to play him. him. Okay. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. To outplay. If I know that the entire system is against me at that point, I'm either going to outplay you. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to rub it in your fucking face. I'm going to talk about it during the okay. press conference. And, else. and you're losing. If I'm losing and there's no chance of me getting anything back and this dude's just doing it to be an asshole, I might sock him in the fucking face. That is what Neymar did. Now, I- I'll say this. Neymar and all, like, if you're black and you play soccer, you've taken abuse. Right? And he's Not never punched. He's, he's, ne- he's never punched anybody. Right? Like, that I've seen. But at a certain point in time, like, if you're playing ever since you're a kid, and now, like, you get to a point where you're just like, fuck it. He hit the shit out of him. There was what? How many red cards? Five? Five and, yeah, five in the last two minutes of the game. I'd headbutt him. I've seen that happen a lot in soccer. Zidane. This is Zidane Zidane. Yeah. And here's the thing. I, I think people underrate how vicious a headbutt is because I see the motherfuckers just fall. Now, there's a he difference headbutt him in the chest, too. The that was the yeah, funny part. Here's the thing with soccer is that I never know if somebody's actually getting hurt or they're just flopping, honestly, when it comes to getting hit. But right now, I'm thinking I'd headbutt you in the nose. Oh, yeah. But you could kill someone doing that. I'm going to break your nose. Okay. I'm cool with that. If they're being, if they're, if they're, if they're throwing racial slurs around, usually you get that from the fans. But have, is, is it possible to to show like the incident? Uh, right now, I, I'm worried about copyright stuff. I don't know. Oh, all right. yeah. So, I mean, basically, what happened is they everybody came together in the middle of the field, and then Neymar he lost he lost his cool, uh, understandably, and socked him right in the mouth. And you don't see punches get thrown. You see a lot of like head to head, like you know, manning up against somebody, but you you very rarely see punches thrown. The last time I really remember it is the Zidane incident. I'm sure there have been more since, but that this Mourinho, like, yeah, but, oh yeah, and Mourinho. But the as far as like talking trash, okay, I think that's a part of any sport, right? But if if um do the do the refs have a zero tolerance policy? Like oh. right up there. Don't do that. I'd rather just try to show the clip anyway. Okay. The, uh, yeah, don't do that. I, <laughs> yeah. I should have sent it. I'm going to send it to you so but here's you can the look thing. at it. It's, I, I saw it. I've watched it like 10 times. Okay. Um, the, the, the thing that I is, – when it comes to refs in soccer, are zero, they supposed zero, to – Zero, zero tolerance. tolerance for racism? Yes. Yeah. So, like, if I'm him in that situation, I might – like, punching him in the face would probably be my last resort. What I'd probably do is take the damn soccer ball – run up to the refs, let them know what's happening, and then I'm going to cause a big stink. I'll probably run over, find the cameraman, tell him to look at me, and tell him to do all these other kind of things to let them know. Exactly Alitelli did that shit. And uh, the same thing from um, the Boateng brother from AC Milan. Yeah. Like, he kicked the ball in the stands and walked the fuck off. That I'd be like, more apt to do that. Cause but like, that but Danny that was, Alves had a banana thrown at him. That was, he picked but that's it up the and ate it that's, and then kept playing. That's the fans. The point is, this was another – player on the field and to me it's like if you're not going to enforce then, that to a player on the field that's calling me those names then i'm out i'm done because you, 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 me- you remember you remember the there was this one player i forgot his name and even if i remembered i wouldn't say it because fuck him but um he called he called one pl- uh, black player the n-word and then like nothing happened during that game yeah but they, then the next time they played they fucked him up it was in the turkish league yeah and then he's banned though he's done yeah, but he played in 
that he was around the whole time to play the next game and then right. he got fucked up. And that that's the point. You gotta hold you gotta hold the football leagues accountable for the actions of their players. And that's I mean, I I haven't seen any real blowback yet, but if this guy's still playing next week. Oh, no. But like you also gotta remember this. Look at the league that Neymar's playing in. Yeah. Where you got where you got the, the president of the league saying that racism doesn't exist. Yeah. No, and you got and that's probably why he lost his cool. Like if the league's not gonna hold this He said players, that this year. <laughs> yeah. If the league's not gonna hold the players accountable, you're gonna have to hold the players accountable. And that's I think to me is we we've had these discussions as far as like the racist fans and everything, and I've never been on the same page as you guys as far as like punching racists in the face. Because I still I, I'm still a firm believer that like words are words and when it comes to something else is something else. Like if we're looking at this situation in which it's like, all right, if I'm seeing that the refs aren't doing anything, you have owners that are also saying this and this entire system is basically predicated on they're not going to give a shit about me. Mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to participate or I'm going to make it known every single way I can every single day of what the problems, the ills are until they get rid of my ass. But I, I, Punching the dude in the face to me is still the absolute last resort. There's a difference between like what we're seeing in America, where if you've got a dude with a gun in Kenosha calling me a Negro or a nigger, I might punch that dude in the face just because I don't want him to shoot anybody and I think it could escalate. But if there's a situation, or I might just run away, honestly. But there's a, but like if if we're talking about like in a league where I know that he's not physically going to harm me, all he's doing is saying some shit. And even though if there's a zero tolerance, I'm going to draw as much attention to it as possible. And if I'm realizing it's a losing battle and nobody's going to fight, well, then I'm going to be at a point where I don't want to participate. I think that in this particular instance, because Neymar is as big as he is, I, and the fact that this particular game got so much coverage afterwards because of this, it's, it's a big spotlight on it. And I think mm-hmm. that it's going to – kind of force UEFA to take a look at the French League because they have the power to be like, hey, if you guys don't fix this, you guys don't play internationally. Yeah, and, and, and like they, and the, they, the they, president said that whole shit about like racism is overblown and it's not really, yeah, it's not, it so, doesn't exist. He said that after this. He, he said it in response to this. Yes. He got, some, he, got, he got a red card. Yeah, but. Any suspension, anything like that? I, think, no, I don't. I don't think so. I think they get suspended like three games if if you get a red card, right? I think he's appealing it. So that's my thing is that I don't want to escalate it to a point in which, if even technically still punching the guy in the face is wrong, that I've now said two wrongs don't make two wrongs. Two wrongs do not make a right. So um, he got two games, but UEFA launched a probe into into the racism. Yeah. In the league, so it's nuts, but. Um, we're getting close to, to time for the pod, so um, I want to go through final thoughts. So, who's first? Uh, I went first last week. I don't want to go first. All, All right, Ryan. Ryan. I'll go. Um, so, since we were last together, uh, the Caps made a coaching hire. Uh, they hired Peter Laviolette. And if you haven't watched it, go and watch some of his uh, locker room speeches where he makes – some of the toughest players in the NHL look afraid. This man holds you accountable for everything you do. I love and this hire. That's he, awesome. He, he was sitting in – Simmons was sitting in a locker room, and Laviolette was like, hey, guys, what the fuck is that going on out there? The fuck are you guys doing? And he was, put, like, pointing people out and holding them individually accountable for their mistakes on their shifts. And at the end, he goes – you guys would get out there, you get one shift. You don't give me 100% on that shift, you will not like your ice time. And that's what the Caps need. They have huge stars who you saw just not show up in the bubble. Okay. Peter, Peter Laviolette ain't going to let you do that. I guarantee you, if Kuznetsov, any of them, Ovi, if they don't go out there and give 100% on a shift, if he sees you and your skates are flat, have a seat. See you ne- I'll see you next game. And I will say this as far as just to piggyback off of that, the, the anybody that I hear criticizing this hire, I think is at completely out of left field. I think the one thing you got to give the Caps credit for is that they have tried time and time again to bring fresh blood, which is first time coaches, and give them the reins, and it hasn't worked out. The only time that we won the championship was with a proven coach, which is what this team needs to really go over the top. You need somebody that's going to hold players accountable. 
which has always been the issue, is that we reach this sort of critical mass in which we can't get over the top because we don't have somebody that can hold guys accountable on that level. And I, I mean, love this hire for that. Yeah, and Trotz, you just saw what Trotz did with a very average Islanders team. I mean, I they're, they're, out, they're out now, but they made it much farther than anybody thought they would. So, Okay. All right, Dean. I, I, you know, uh, not sports related. COVID's still a thing. We just hit 200,000 deaths. Wear your fucking mask. This is not time to go out and party and to do all this other kind of dumb shit. I realize it's been a while. I realize that right now it's not the number one thing in the news the way it has been. The press conferences have stopped as far as from the administration. We have, we have a million worldwide deaths. To us to do what we can do to mitigate this. And we're coming up on the flu season. If you haven't gotten your flu shot, get your shit done. We got to do what it is that we can do. And also, we over the course of since the last podcast, we have now on record from the Bob Woodward tapes, the president saying that he has downplayed the coronavirus on purpose, which means he has blood on his hands. We need to do what we need. We need to do what we can collectively to get this fucker out. If you need to vote early, vote early now. If you're young and you're healthy, instead of going to the bars, volunteer to work at a polling station. If you're not going to volunteer to work at a polling station, get in your fucking car, get some mash ready, and get people down to the polling station. Yeah, this and, uh, cannot be a small victory. We have to win, and we have to win outright, because if on election night the votes are tallied and this man is in the lead before the mail-in ballots get a shot to get counted, we are running into a situation that's going to be bad. And with RBG uh, passing away, what's going to happen on Capitol Hill as far as the Supreme Court? There's a chance that we're looking at January 20th with the Supreme Court deadlocked at 4-4, four and four, no tiebreaker. And we're also looking at a situation where Nancy Pelosi could be fucking president because there's a bunch of things tied up in lawsuits. We need to win, and we need to win big. Yeah, and uh, if you're in the Northern Virginia area, I don't know what it's like in Maryland. Uh, uh, voting, in-person voting began yesterday. Uh, I've already voted. Um, so if you want to vote, polling places are open. You can go now and through Election Day in November. So get there, right. get there early. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. None. So uh, I should have had Kadeen go last. Because mine's nowhere near as serious. Uh, my final thought is, I'll switch I just it up. <laughs> yeah, like you need to tell me, <laughs> what? like say, like, oh, I need to go last. If you, if I haven't made an impassioned speech it, by this point in the episode, you yeah, realize yeah, it's coming. That's in the, the first one. Thought. You were talking about like the skins or some shit, like sometimes or uh, the Washington Damn it. Uh, Whatever. Whatever. All right. So <laughs> we have y'all have... working so hard to make us woke, and y'all can't be woke now. It's ridiculous. Stop it! I got four minutes left. <laughs> okay. All right. So we haven't discussed the the seat changes in Formula One for 2021. Um, a lot of random shit happened. So I'm just gonna say what they are, like the big headline, um, the head headlines, the names, and head stuff waves. like that. He yeah. he head waves. And then we'll then I'll talk about it after. So Fernando Alonso's coming back and he's going to Alpine, which used to be Reno. Yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, okay. uh Ricardo's going to McLaren from Reno, which is nuts. Uh Carlos Sainz is going to Ferrari. Wow. Uh Vettel's going to Ashton Martin, which used to be Racing Point. Thank God. All this shit is nuts. So Racing Point is now gone and it's now Aston Martin. That's that's crazy. I'm I can't believe Carlos Sainz is going to Ferrari. And I mean, better better cars. Are they? <laughs> I mean, Vettel, the team Vettel, the team is shit this year. And that the Vettel move doesn't surprise me in the least. He was out anyway. Yeah, I, I knew he was out because like they they treated him like trash, and yeah, the, car, he, the cars just been bad. Yeah, he was, was it like a month ago? He was like, this this car is not steering correctly. You guys know you messed up. Yeah, and he's like, and they give him, like, the wrong strategies, and, and, like, I love when I hear the drivers on the radio, like, talking shit to the engineers or telling them, like, something that they, I like to see the emotion. Yeah, I mean, so, they're, they're competitors, and if, it's like, it's like going out there and not having a good, like, training staff and getting injured all the time, and it's not your fault, it's because the people behind you aren't doing their jobs. You it's know hard what? to understand it without subtitles. You know what makes me angrier than anything else? People that make my job harder for me. Don't need you. Don't want you. Please go away. Yeah. So law-abiding citizens. 
I think I think uh I think Ferrari is still, still gonna have trouble. And call me. <laughs> I think Ferrari is still gonna have trouble next year. And I mean they need better they need a better car. I what what's gonna be funny is to see uh Vettel's uh like finishing compared to um, I mean but Vettel will Ferrari. also he will be top fiddle. So that it, but there, there that, won't be that competition. He's also going to a like a good car. <laughs> yeah, but he'll have a good car and he'll also be number one on his team as opposed to being who's number one, who's number two. Yeah, Charles like, Leclerc and all that yeah, stuff. But there, there's, there's not going to be that kind of power struggle at the top there. And I think he was really frustrated with that. So that's why I'm not, I'm not surprised that he's gone. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting. interesting. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw all this stuff come out. But yeah, that was my final thought. All right, y'all. Be coolie, safe. Cooly, cooly, Uh We got we got football all day tomorrow. We got football on Monday. We got basketball for playoffs. We got you got Arsenal in fifteen minutes. Arsenal in fifteen minutes. They're they're one and zero over there. This is going to be a tough battle. Um, and uh, we got hockey playoffs or hockey finals. We have basketball finals, guys. It's my new year, but it's basically Christmas for all of us. So enjoy. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yay. I'm gonna, dude. I get to, I get to drink, and then next weekend, um, I'm gonna have to bring this stuff with me. It's my birthday, um, and I will be. At, what day? Is it on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, or Sunday? But I will be in Lake Anna, so you guys are more than welcome to come. Where the hell is Lake Anna? About an hour south of here. Trump country. It's Orange, Virginia. It's it, Trump country. It, well, people that have houses on Lake Anna. They're from Northern Virginia. So technically it's Biden country. You have to drive through Trump County. I lived I lived like five minutes away from Orange County. I'm very familiar. It's it'll be a good time though. Get a fish and kayak and What day are you getting down there? Friday. All right. So what day are, are we supposed to be able to go? I'll be there Friday to Monday. All right. If anything, I might see you on Saturday. Like, yeah, I mean it's just it's gonna be me and two other people who have been working from home this entire time. So you trying to go, Kadeem? I don't know. Because if just hit me up, I my life's been kind of crazy. I don't know. You, right, you're more, well, you're more than you welcome can, to bring. You're more than welcome you to bring the lady as well. Both of you, it doesn't matter. All right. So if you can, then we can do like a live pod. Ooh, sounds intriguing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. intriguing. And then All we right. can celebrate his birthday at the same time. All right. Love you. Both. Stay safe. All right. Wear your mask. Go vote. Yep. Peace.